welcome to worship with Memorial United Methodist Church in Gladstone, Michigan. I'm Kathy Rafferty, I'm the pastor here, and I am glad that you and I and God have gathered together in this way to worship on this fourth Sunday of the Easter season. While the building may still be closed, Memorial Church is enthusiastically open to proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ. If you connect with us on our website or Facebook, or send us your email, we'll do our best to keep you up to date with what's happening, including providing an at-home worship guide and a children's page to go along with our Sunday worship videos. You can see our contact information at the end, and we're still checking the US mail and the phone. Now, if you've been following along, you recall that we're journeying through the season of Easter, from mid-April until Pentecost Sunday, which this year is March 31st. On Easter Sunday, we proclaimed, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. And we'll continue to do that every Sunday of this Easter season through till Pentecost. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Christians down through the centuries have realized that it may take a little while for us to wrap our heads and our hearts around the wonder of resurrection. This may be especially true for us this year. So we are taking our time with the resurrection stories of the Gospels through these Sundays of the Easter season. Each week we're focusing on one of the stories of the risen Christ appearing to women and men who had lost hope, lost faith, lost direction. Stories of the uncertainty and doubt, the confusion and disappointment, gradually giving way to transformed lives, larger perspectives, fresh energy, and resurrection reality. I hope you'll stay with us through all of the Easter season as we navigate our way through these uncertain times. To get started today, will you please join with me in a spirit of prayer. Risen Christ, in the midst of our fears and doubts, you come to us offering your peace, breathing into us your spirit. As we gather to worship, may we experience your presence and be filled by your spirit so that we too may rise up to proclaim your love. Amen. Now let's take a few deep breaths to continue centering ourselves for worship as we hear our organist, Kathy Young, play a fantasy prelude on an Easter hymn.
A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in your hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello kids, it's Grandma Joy here, and I'm going to tell you a story today using our godly play which we love so much. And this takes place right after Jesus was crucified and rose again on Easter Sunday. Sunday evening, the disciples were all gathered together in a locked room talking about the things that had happened that weekend. And all of a sudden, Jesus was there among them. And he said, peace be unto you. The disciples were overjoyed, but they weren't positive it was Jesus. Jesus stretched out his hands and he said, look at where the nails went into my hands and look at the hole in my side where I, the spear went into my side. And then he said again, peace be with you. And he, then he breathed on him his breath of his Holy Spirit. And he said, whoever of you forgives someone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive their sins, their sins will not be forgiven. And Jesus disappeared from their midst. Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, didn't happen to be with them that day in the room. And when he came back and came into the room, they said, Thomas, Thomas, we've seen Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. And Thomas said, unless I see that where the nails went in the palms of his hand and put my hand where the spear went into his side, I will not believe. Well, about a week later, all of the disciples were in the locked room, and Thomas was there with them. And all of a sudden, again, Jesus appeared in the midst of them, and he said, Peace be unto you. And then he turned to Thomas, and he said, Thomas, see my hands? Put your fingers in the nail holes of my hands and put your hand in the hole in my side. And Thomas said, Lord, Lord, I believe. And Jesus said to him and to the rest of the disciples, Thomas, Thomas, blessed are you because you have seen, but more blessed are those who have not seen and still believe in me. And those people are you and me, kids, because we have never seen Jesus and yet we believe. Let's have a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless these children and be with us as we learn more and more about you. 
and learn to trust you and love you and know that you are with us always and all we need to do is to turn to you and say Jesus and in your name we pray amen thank you joy so grateful to you and to the others the liturgists and the musicians the photographers all of those who have been willing to help to create our worship experience if there are any of you out there who are watching who would like to be a part of our worship experience to read scripture or provide music or have some other way that you would like to be a part of the service then i would be grateful to hear from you and you can find that contact information at the end of the video so now as we heard from Berta's reading and Joy's story for the children, the disciples are hiding in fear behind locked doors. Hiding in fear behind locked doors. Hmm. Who does that for Easter? I never imagined this story of John's gospel would one day seem quite so relatable to me. Yet, here we are, the doors are locked, fearful and uncertain as to what may happen to us next. Should we stay locked away? Would it be safe to venture out? Could we just go back to how it was before? Our questions today may echo those of the disciples on the evening of that first Easter. Disciples hiding in fear behind locked doors, uncertain what would happen next. Some of them had heard the news of the empty tomb, perhaps even of the appearance of the risen Christ earlier that day. But what to make of it? What did it mean for them? Whatever it meant, clearly it didn't make them feel safe or compelled to go out and share that good news. Not yet, anyway. Some 2,000 years later, some of us have heard the news of the empty tomb and the stories of the risen Christ appearing. Some of us, we've heard it over and over and over again, year after year after year after year, for most of our lives. But what to make of it today? What does it mean for us in this time of pandemic uncertainty, these days of lost opportunities, missed celebrations, canceled plans, this season of fear and hiding and sickness and death? If only Jesus would come in through the locked doors, and tell us what to do. If only we could see him, recognize him by the marks in his hands, the wound on his side. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but I'm pretty sure if it did, it wouldn't look like a Rembrandt masterpiece or a 1960s Hollywood epic film. The point isn't for us to recreate biblical stories of Easter or anything else over and over, or to expect Jesus to do the things he did before in the same ways he did them at that time. In these weeks since Easter Sunday, we've heard the Bible stories in which the risen Christ appears to different people in different ways at different places even within the gospel stories themselves. The end of today's reading from John's gospel tells us what the point is of all these stories of Jesus. It says, these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Jesus comes into the locked room, offering a word of peace to his frightened disciples. 
So I'm wondering today, where do we hear that word of peace? Is it in reading the Bible, spending time in prayer, through music or the wonder of creation? Is it in the phone call from a loved one, Zoom gatherings with families, FaceTime with grandkids? Is it a card of encouragement or a bag of groceries that speaks that word of peace to us? Who is speaking peace into your life in ways that move you beyond the fear of locked rooms? And to whom are you passing the peace of Christ through your life? even if you are doing it from the safety of your own home. Jesus comes into the locked room, breathing the Holy Spirit on the disciples, inviting them to receive God's breath of life. Where do we draw that breath of life today? What fills us with God's spirit of courage to overcome fear, energy to take action, wisdom to know what action to take? Who gives us room to breathe and invites us to receive? Who are the ones who have taught us how to breathe deeply and to live abundantly? the saints of our lives, of our congregation, or the world? Those who act with courage despite their fears, caring for the vulnerable and speaking out for the voiceless. The health care givers, the mask makers, the food pantry volunteers, the refugees risking all for a fresh start, the oppressed and marginalized standing up for their lives. Those who lead with humility, accept responsibility, and make a difference. Breathe in deeply through their examples, through the possibilities and power their lives invoke. Through a certainty, maybe just a suspicion, that their lives are driven by and connected to something much larger than themselves. And then see what difference God's Holy Spirit breathing out through your life might make in the lives of others. For whom can you stand up and speak out? Who can you teach or reach, feed or clothe, shelter or encourage, inspire, powered by God's Spirit? Jesus comes into the locked room with peace, with the breath of the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus comes into the locked room again, just for Thomas, who wasn't there the first time. Are we the ones who need another chance to believe? Another word of peace? Another sign from God? Jesus comes into our locked rooms and our locked lives through closed doors, through barricaded hearts, with another chance to believe, no matter how deeply we may doubt. Even in this time of pandemic uncertainty, perhaps especially in these days of lost opportunities and missed celebrations, canceled plans, this season of fear and hiding and sickness and dying. 
Jesus comes into our locked rooms again just for each one of us. And when Jesus comes into the room today, that person will be the one offering a word of peace. The one giving us room to breathe and even space to doubt. Jesus today will be the one filling us with a spirit of courage, energy, wisdom, drawing our attention to the vulnerable and the voiceless. Jesus today will be the one who keeps coming into the room again and again and again with forgiveness, with love, offering one another a chance to believe in something together, offering each one of us a chance to believe again, another chance to have life in the name of the risen Christ, abundant and everlasting. We may not literally see Jesus of Nazareth with nail-scarred hands, a wounded side, but the risen Christ comes into our lives every day, calling us to be the body of Christ in our world today, inspiring each one of us to rise up to proclaim God's love. Jesus comes into the locked room again and again and again. Thanks be to God. We're going to share a hymn now. Debbie Hubbard is playing piano for us. The hymn is Come Ye Thankful. Raise the strain. If you have a hymnal, it's number 315. If you have a worship guide, you'll find the lyrics on that. And we're going to start with the second verse. I want to share those lyrics with you in case you don't have them at hand. From Come Ye Thankful, Raise the Strain, the second verse. Tis the spring of souls today. The spring of souls today. Christ hath burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death, as a sun hath risen. All the winter of our sins, long and dark is flying. From his light, to whom we give laud and praise undying. Tis the spring of souls today. Here's the hymn. Come ye faithful, raise the strain.
one way in which we respond to God's word in worship. I'm encouraged that so many of you have continued to give faithfully through these uncertain days. I'm grateful for your commitment to proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ through the ministries of this congregation in this time and in this place. It is my hope and prayer that each of you will find ways to give of yourself in this week to come. You may give financially to Memorial United Methodist Church online on our website or by mailing a check to the office and you see that contact information at the end. And so we give thanks for the generous ways in which God provides for us and we give thanks for your generous response to the good news of God's gospel. Each week we also share our prayers together, you know, recognize our prayer cards, our joys and our concerns, whatever is on our hearts. Those of you for whom we have email have received our prayer list for this week. Our list is also posted on the website, and I trust that you will hold those on our prayer list in your prayers throughout the week. You can also connect with us um, and send in your prayer requests for the week ahead. For today, let's take a quiet moment to offer those prayers that are on our hearts, knowing we pray together as the gathered body of Christ. Gracious God, we come to you with thanks, knowing that you are present with us. We come to you with thanks for the peace that you bring and for the power of your Holy Spirit working in and through us. And as we gather in this way for worship, we lift up those who are named on our prayer list. We lift up those dear to us whose lives have been touched by this pandemic, as well as those in other places, in other parts of the world, all over the world, the sickness and the death, and the upheaval to lives, the turmoil and the chaos. We lift it all to you. We pray, Lord, for those who find courage and wisdom and energy to respond in creative and life-giving ways. We thank you for all of their efforts and all of their actions. And we pray, Lord, that you would keep safe those who are in harm's way. We give you thanks for the change in seasons that remind us that time does pass and does make a difference. And we ask, Lord, that you would keep us ever mindful that you are with us, giving us life with every breath, leading us to be the body of Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a dry throat. Now, as we seek to be the disciples of Jesus Christ, let us pray together the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
to thank you for watching and for worshiping with us. I hope you'll check back again. And until then, as we conclude our time together, I'll leave you with this Easter blessing. May you experience the peace of the risen Christ. May you be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And may you live to share the abundant and eternal life that God gives.